Good morning. This is Pastor Jeff Person. I'm coming to you this morning from the most unlikeliest of places. I'm standing here at the end of Garrett's Island Road, the road that I grew up on. Many, many years ago, I lived next door to my grandparents just about a mile back up the road this way. And this is a special place. It's in this unlikeliest of places, this dirt path it would be to my rear, that I want to share a story with you. I want to share something from my heart today. As you know, this is Palm Sunday. And this is the day we celebrate the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ as he would go into Jerusalem. But I want us to understand the setting. I want us to understand the backstory of what was taking place there. This was a period of great unrest. It was a period of great consternation in the people's hearts. They were under great oppression. They were under great hardship. And I want us to understand today that, that during this time of hardship, during this time of great op oppression, one would emerge named Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. And some would accept him. Some would view him as the Messiah, the chosen one. Others would just call him a prophet. And then others would call him a heretic. And they would work against him and try to kill him. But Jesus had been in Jericho and he had been healing people. This was the place where he had, had that encounter with Zacchaeus and, and he would say, salvation has come to your house today. And others were healed and as they would go back, begin to head back into Jerusalem, Jesus would stop at the foot of the Mount of Olives and he would pull his disciples away to the side and he would say, now I want you to understand something. This is a different trip back to Jerusalem than we've ever taken before. This one's different. This one is, is, is way different than anything we've done before. You see, what's going to happen is this is going to begin a series of events that's going to literally change the world, but it must end in my death. And they wouldn't fully understand all of this, but it's like he was planting a seed in their heart that they would begin to connect the dots later. As they would approach near the edge of the city, they would, he would stop and pull two of his disciples away aside and say, listen, I have a mission for you. And he would send them into the city and he says, in a certain place you're going to find a donkey there and you're going to take him, secure him and bring him back to me. And if anyone stops you, just tell them the master has need of him and they'll let you go. Well, this indeed happened just as he said. I can visualize as these two disciples were bringing this donkey 
back out of the city that some probably recognized him. Some probably oh, understood who, who, who they were. Some probably remembered that, hey, these are the guys that were, are with Jesus all the time. And an excitement began to come. And people began to follow. And people began to congregate as to what was about to happen. And as they would come back to where Jesus was, they would lay their garments on that donkey and set Jesus there. And Jesus would then begin to ride in to Jerusalem on that donkey. Well, something spontaneous would happen. As he was riding on this donkey headed into Jerusalem, people would begin to take their coats off and lay in the street. And they would strip palm branches from the trees and lay them there as if they were participating in the coronation of a king. And many of their eyes, they were. And as Jesus would walk in, they would begin to shout. One would shout, and then another. And then I believe there was a great chorus where they would shout, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. They would ring this out. And this would become the, the chorus of the day as, as it would be. There would be a, a charge in the air. There would be an excitement. But as here I begin to notice and pose some questions in my own heart. I want us to take a look this morning at who was there. And I want us to take a look at this morning at who was not there. And then what he was about to do. When I consider who was there, I think it's easy for us to, to think that probably he was there with people that had been healed by him. People that had been touched by him. People that maybe were onlookers or, or witnesses of what he had done in his previous acts of, of miraculous healings. Maybe there was some there that just wanted to get in on the healing. But this would, as it would unfold in their hearts, they would begin to cry out. They would begin to realize that something significant was taking place. Something different was happening. And Jesus would just quietly ride into the streets. But their hearts would respond with such joy and happiness. As I also begin to consider who was not there, I begin to consider the people that were hidden in their homes, maybe looking through their windows, maybe peering through cracked doors. Some were just afraid. You see, the climate of that day was Roman oppression. People were afraid. The Jewish people were so weary from the oppression of this Roman rule, they really didn't have any rights anymore. All of that, it would seem, had been stripped away. And the mechanism of the religious structure of that day seemed to be working in league with this Roman oppression, as if it would be just to simply survive the moment. But I believe there were a lot of people in fear a lot of people with anxiety. I believe there was a lot of people that refused to come out because they were simply part of that group that hated this Jesus. They considered him to be a heretic. You, you see, to some, he was the Messiah. To some, he was just a prophet. But to these, they, he was a heretic. He was evil, and they wanted to be rid of him. There was all these different viewpoints, I believe, hidden away that refused to come out to the street that, that day. And then I see what Christ did as he rode into the streets, as he rode downtown, as it would be, and head directly to the temple. It's as if Christ was saying something to us here today. Christ was going in that moment, and he was going in that circumstance, headed to the temple, the place that represented what they understood worship to be. A place that, that Solomon built, a place that was, was erected to, to be a place to house the presence of Almighty God. This was the place that, that Solomon would rise on that day, as I've shared before, and say, God, would you rise from your resting place and come and make this your resting place? This would be the place that Jesus would come to. Because you see, this place, this temple, had changed. It was no longer what it was created to be. 
It no longer seemed to represent what it was supposed to represent. So much had become entrenched. So many evil thoughts, so many things, so many practices that were not in keeping with God's plans and intentions. This place had morphed into something way different from what God intended. And Jesus would walk into that place and he would begin to turn things over. He would begin to bring up evil to that moment as if to say, this is not how it was supposed to be. Now, can I pause here and just give a message to the church? You've heard me sharing over the past few weeks how I believe God is bringing a shift to the church, especially the American church. You see, the church was born at Pentecost. The church was born in power. The church was born in fire. The church was born with great purpose, and great purpose was given to it. And He empowered us to fulfill that purpose. We were, the mandate was given, go into all the world, make disciples, win people, tell people about this Jesus. That was the mandate given to us. But as time has rolled on, we have morphed into something completely different. We have become good at our programs. We have become good at, self, at self-reliance. We have become good at, at kind of maintaining status quo. We become good at preserving our institutions and might I dare say, sacred cows even. And just as God would send Moses back from the mountain and, and, and turn things over when they had started worshiping that golden calf, I believe God Almighty is coming, bringing a reset to the American church today, to the church at large, and saying, this is not how it's supposed to be. You've morphed it into something different. There's a clarion call, I believe, that is coming from this day as we celebrate Palm Sunday. And that is the call from heaven that says simply, come to the streets. There's an invitation. Jesus, riding down the street on a donkey, there was a simple invitation. How are you going to respond to that? What is going to be your response to Him being there? And can I say the cry from my heart today is for the church of Jesus Christ to once again come out of the building. We're already out of the building, but let's come out of our homes. Let's come out of of our our circumstances. Let's come out of our, our anxieties. Let's come out of our fears. And let's once again come back to the streets and fulfill and live the purpose that God has called us to. I'm hearing that cry so poignantly in my heart this morning. But I believe there's also a cry for those that have turned away. For those that have walked away from this faith. For those that have become disillusioned with this temple thing. Become disillusioned with church. Can I tell you today, very simply, the cry has still come to the streets. Because you see, the streets is where He is. The street is where you'll find healing. The street is where you'll find hope. The street is where we return to purpose again. The street is where we have rebirthed in us our whole entire reason for being. And beloved, can I just tell you, our reason for being is not just to have church every week. It's not just to gather in a building every every week and and worship together. Those things are wonderful. But it's got to be more than that. And I believe Jesus, as He rode in on the streets that day many, many years ago, and I believe He's trying to communicate in this culture today, the same power, the same principle, the same hope, It's as if Jesus is saying all over again, I'm in the street. Won't you come? I'm in the street. I'm in this place. Won't you come and join me? My challenge to the church today is, let's come back to the street. 
Let's come to where the hurting people are. Let's come to where the needs are because if we'll come back to the street, Jesus is there and He will empower us to be able to communicate this good gospel. You see, I sense that we're living in a period of time where people's hearts are at such a place of unrest that they're naturally turning to Christ. They're turning to faith. And our church has to be positioned. The harvest is there. We have to be positioned to be able to reach those hearts, to reach those people. Because that reaching will not be done sitting on our church pews. They will not be done from our traditional pulpits. But it will be done when we walk outside of the church and we go to the streets once again where people are. And we touch them with the, changeable, with the changing message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is the thrust of my heart today. That is what I sense the Holy Spirit speaking so clearly in my heart these past weeks. Where it seems like I've been hearing Him more clearly than I have in years. God so wants to do something in this hour. Eternity literally hangs in the balance for many. And I don't know about you, but when He comes back, I want to be found so doing. I don't want to be doing the same thing I've always done, rehearsing the religious platitudes standing in a pulpit in a church. We're only a few here, and we're all, only a few listen. But I believe God is calling us to something higher, to something deeper, to something more powerful, to something more rich. And that is for us once again to come out and be the hands and feet of Jesus Christ. On this Palm Sunday, let's determine to come back to the streets. Let's determine to shout that message of Jesus Christ. Let's don't be afraid of what the, the social climate would tell us. Let's don't be afraid of what ramifications may occur. Let's no longer be afraid. You see, we have fallen into the spell of this culture that has deemed us irrelevant, that's deemed us to be intolerant, hateful people. Beloved, we are the children of the Most High. We have been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ and we have the only story, we have the only message that will bring hope to people's hearts. You see, what we possess in our hearts, what we literally possess in our hands, is something the government cannot do. But yet we almost are in league with the government just as they were in Jesus' day to try to think the government's going to be the answer. I'm here to tell you the government is not the answer. Whatever money, position, power, or fame you think you have attached to your name, that is not going to work for you now. There is but one answer for this hour. There is but one answer for this day, and that is the power of the blood of Jesus Christ that still liberates people. I'm talking about the power of the blood of Christ that still is able to deliver the drug addict, that's still able to bring the prostitute out of her sin, that's still able to bring the drunkard out of the addiction of alcohol, that's still able to bring the one who is contemplating taking their life away from the brink and give them hope again. I'm talking to the person that has become so disillusioned with church that you fed up with it, you've walked away from it, you've, you've said you can't live it, you said there's no way you can do it, I'm here to declare to you today you can through the power of Jesus Christ. There's hope for you today. There's hope for our hearts, and we have in our hands this greatest story ever told. And it's the story of Jesus as He would ride into the midst of a very unsettled situation. And people would just simply understand in that moment that He is the King. He is the King. He is the one that has the power to change my life, to change my circumstances. So I invite you today. Church, join me in the streets. You that are broken, you that are lost, you that don't know Him as your Savior, I'm willing to come where you are. And I'm willing to simply tell you this story. 
Because this is what I know. That if you will take a chance, if you'll take a leap of faith with me, and simply declare as Scripture says that He is Lord, declare that He is the Son of God, the one that God raised from the dead, just believe that in your heart. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Beloved, can I tell you, you'll be saved. And we'll walk with you. We'll disciple you. We'll walk with you on this journey. We'll roll our sleeves up as it would be. And we're willing to go through any links to walk with you on this journey. But let's do it together. Let's do it together. Let's pray. Father, I come before you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. My heart is so challenged today. My heart is so probed today, Father, with, with the power of your presence. Holy Father, I'm asking. I'm asking. I'm pleading with you today, God, to, to open our eyes. Open our hearts. Let us hear. Let us feel. Let us come to realize once again, Father, that you have a plan for each of us. That you have a purpose for us. Empower us for this moment, O oh God. Empower us for this day, Lord. I'm asking in the name of Jesus Christ that you would move the mountain that hinders our hearts. Remove fear. Remove anxiety and doubt. Remove the pains of the past. Remove the hurts of the past today, Father. And let the oil of your Spirit come and pour into every heart and bring hope. Father, I pray that you would help us to see you. To see where you are. To see where you're working. And give us a heart to join you in the streets, Father. And to simply call you Lord. Because we have great confidence today, Lord, that if, if we call you Lord, and we invite your presence to where we are, and Lord, I feel you here right now. It's in this place of your presence that there's liberty, that there's freedom, that the weight is taken away. So Father, I pray for your people today. I pray for their protection. I pray for their, their futures. I pray for their circumstances today, Father, that you would make provision for them, that you would provide for them in every way, Father. I just ask that your great love would come around today and just pull all of us close to you and let us feel the kindness and tenderness of your presence. I ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I want to thank you for joining us this morning. I thank you for joining me today at the end of Garrett's Island Road. It's Palm Sunday. Let me invite you to the streets. Let me invite you to come with me to the street. And let's just simply proclaim Jesus as Lord. He is the great King. And He is the answer to every dilemma we face. God bless you and His favor and blessings be on you is my prayer. Amen.